Hello, my soccer universe. Yeah, I feel a little bit weird wearing this green jersey here because it's kind of a weird color. But I, 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 I always said I found this jersey to be super, super loud, and that's why I did like it. Uh, yeah, any weekend where we talk about Bayern suffering an embarrassing loss, I would consider to be a happy weekend, but then my guys here back there uh, always again suffer from the same flaws that have been plaguing them the whole season and so it's kind of a little bit of a downer uh, but we'll talk about that all i want to say now for the austria league before uh, before i give you a little bit overview over germany is it says a whole lot you know i have here the austrian league line up so this position uh best improvers uh salzburg then rapid then lask then sturm sturm and lask had a draw rapid lost to salzburg as, as, as we see statistically this was a better result then those two did. That tells a lot about the Austrian league in many, 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 many ways. But I think the big talking point, point is that yeah, ahead of the clash between the Austrian and the German champions, Bayern and Salzburg, uh, Bayern suffer an absolutely devastating loss to Bochum. Unfortunately, I don't have a Bochum jersey. I actually I could have ordered an old one, uh, but it would have been double dar like I didn't like the price. Could have ordered it, but it wouldn't have arrived on time. But I thought, yeah, this might be uh, nice to finally add a blue color because I was looking at Bielefeld, who has actually a nice jersey for, for Bochum. Although I, I do like this year, um, there's for me only one jersey, and that's the rainbow jersey in a way. But Bochum is one of those teams that, yeah, the grau mouse, uh, gray mouse, grau mouse. So a kind of a team that. Uh, doesn't really interest anyone outside of Bochum. On the other side, I'm at the moment reading a really interesting book on the history of German football from the perspective from a former Bochum manager, Heinz Hör, from the 70s. And yeah, Bochum sounds like sounds like a fun place to be there. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff there, as was this round. Now, before uh, we go into it and talk uh, all a little bit closer, do we have a title race? Yes, Dortmund could close the gap. Dortmund is too inconsistent. As I said in England, I do not see Bayern. They had ahead of this round a nine-point lead. And yes, Manuel Neuer is out. Yes, Süle is going to Dortmund uh, at the end of the season. But all consider there is just no way that Bayern is losing this title. It even says a lot about the state of the Bundesliga that Manuel Neuer said, yeah, I have this surgery. It's not a, a must have, but maybe now is a good time to take it because we have this big lead. We have an easy draw in the Champions League. And then for the, re for the remainder of the season, I'll be out a month and then... I will be available for the hot uh, end of the season. And yeah, I really do not see in any, in any way Dortmund getting back into this title race. Because, not because of Bayern being so strong, no. Because Dortmund is so inconsistent. Or not. But we'll start it in Austria and actually the kickoff to the um, spring part of the season or the last four rounds in the regular season, if you would like, was the... Probably what many cons consider the biggest duel in Austria at the moment, although not fan-wise, but uh, given the status of the two teams, Salzburg the overwhelming favorite and Rapid the most supported team. So it's, it's always a big clash when those two uh, go in Vienna and it happened on a Friday, which was, which was crucial because Rapid tried everything to have this move to Saturday because on Saturday the regulations would have uh, allowed at least 50% capacity or, you know, everything that can be in sitting room, there could be spec spectators, whereas on Friday it was still a maximum, I think, of 5,000. Salzburg quickly shot this down. I mean, hey, why would they? I mean, they rolled, rolled and said, yeah, we understand and blah, 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 blah. But in our preparation for the Champions League game against Bayern, we just cannot, um, yeah. Typically, post pushing I mean... To be honest, why would you want to play a stadium that is full when we know that the Rapid fans are the noisiest in the league? So uh, playing uh, in a half-empty uh, Allianz Arena, uh, uh, not, not an uh, Allianz Stadion, is not a bad thing. So uh, the game actually started with a disallowed goal for Salzburg, then Stojkovic took the lead for Rapid. And for a while it seemed like they could pull the upset because, you know, Salzburg is pulling all the baskets now. It's all about Champions League, but they're so far ahead uh, that they probably can cruise a little bit. But Aronson, after a nice Okafor assist, 
in the 64th gets an equalizer and then uh, they actually turn to, uh, to turn around and Okafor in the 77th gets the winner and Rapid just cannot come back because Salzburg far ahead of everyone else. From the other re re results, I mean, not, uh, you know that last game was, I say now was in the battle for the top six. Uh, points dropped by Sturm Graz were really, really, really good, although their new uh, striker Heulund, they um, just gave their, um, they uh, 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 they signed, uh, sold a striker to Genoa. Uh, but, you know, uh, as, but they got a replacement striker who already scored two, so uh, last one to get a striker, why cannot they get such a striker? And, 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 and anyway, it was a perfect 2 2 Tirol taking lead and then getting an equalizer late. As I said, the win by Austria was not helpful, uh, the win by Wolfsburg against Ried was very helpful. Uh, but you know, it all comes down to last coup. At least needed to have three wins out of four games, and there's one game against Salzburg and once against Wolfsburg. So, two top teams in there. So, it was a must win. And last played really well for 65 minutes. Missed many chances, scored the first head of the season, which is weird because we used to uh, score a lot of headers. Um, in the forward, it made and Ragush could have scored the goal of the season uh, with the way he uh, took the ball and then tried to lob it over the goalkeeper. Missed, missed others, uh, and so on and so forth. Many chances missed. And then a stupid, absolutely stupid. Stupid uh, yellow red for Michal turns the game on its head. At that moment, everything got nervous. I also think that the um, coach did not really help with his easy chain. I think the first set bringing a new signing Jovicic in was actually a good idea. But you already could see that the corner kicks, they were a little bit shaky. And then Mara, it looked offside. It never was an offside, unfortunately, because... Um, Ragush cannot come, can come out against the equalizer. A few minutes later, Ragus nice assist Jovicic in his first game for last. He played an awesome game uh, in those few, few minutes, so at least this has been a little bit positive. He scores a goal 2 1, and you think with a man down 2 1, and now you can counter, which they did, which they missed, of course. And then I think this is the one that goes on the coach. He brings on a defender for Horvath. I understand the thinking. Looking at it is tall. He can head out the balls. However, Horvath is a player that can hold up the ball really, really, really nice. And that immediately paid dividends for Klang. Klang for because Lou looking at it with an easy nine tackle in, in, in the box. I think it was not a penalty, but it was not one of those where it will get overturned in VAR. Penalty 2-2. Two, two. And then, yeah, they try and then uh, Gemi Chibazi make the penalty and then he also gets a red card for a really rude take from behind. 2-2, I think this settles it for me. Who will go up in the championship group? I mean, the next game is against Admiralaka away from home. That will be uh, hopefully three points. If not, I don't know what's going to uh, help. But then it's Salzburg and Wolfsburg. So not going to happen. I think Lask uh, is more or less out of the running for the top six, even though it's only three points behind. Um, so let's move over to the German Bundesliga. You know, there are many stats. You get in the stats cast at the uh, end of all the review vi videos. Um, and yeah, in Germany, it started out with Leipzig getting a 3-1 win over Köln. That was a horrible first half. The only real chance was a the Nkunku free kick. Um, but then... Dani Olmo really took, took the game over, as, uh, scores one, assists one, uh, 54th and 57th, and Curran just cannot come back from that one. Uh, they, I think only one scored then by uh, Lampale uh, uh, laid on. Gladbach, huge win over Augsburg that they needed. Uh, they had a 2-0 and a 3-1 lead, uh, so it wasn't much clearer than it is, uh, but they, uh, that actually gets them relieves them a little bit, They're a little bit like Everton, it relieves them of the um, uh, relegation worries, at least for, for the moment, and the big one, of course. Bochum 4, Bayern 2. And Bochum scored all their goals in the first half, and Bayern even took in the ninth minute the lead. And then I, I remember it says, because I was watching on what we call the conference, um, goal in Bochum, I said, okay, Bayern 2, two how, how boring. No. And we are Jay with a really nice effort actually got the equalizer. Then there's a penalty in the uh, in, in the 30th minute. Locadia converted 2-1 Bayern. 2-1 uh, Bochum. 
and then all hell broke loose. Gamboa with a crazy shot makes it 3-1 three, uh, three and then Holtman and I think um, there maybe Ulrich could have looked a little better. You can definitely tell he's the replacement goal, 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 goalkeeper. But yeah, it's 4-1 at the half and it was really goalie Bochum, goalie Bochum and everybody's going, going crazy. The commentator was saying, uh, you know, he, he was yelling and screaming and said, Please, dear Bayern it's not like that I have anything against you, but this is just so sensational of a Bochum playing. And I totally can agree with that. This was absolutely sensational. And yes, I do not like Bayern overall. But yeah, I don't care too much about Bochum either. It was amazing. However, there was a game where I think Bochum had a 4 0 lead and they lost 5 6 at home to Bayern not too long ago, as far as I can, I can remember. So you always had that, that in the back, back of your mind. And it was kind of there. Uh, Lewandowski gets in the 75th and uh, another one. Then I think there was a goal that was called for offside. The, the chances were there for Bayern to get back into that game. Late on, Bochum were really, really hanging on, but get a famous 4 2 victory uh, that might give some interest back to the to, to Bundesliga and definitely uh, expose the defensive weaknesses for Bayern. As good as they might be up front, defensively Bayern are really, really bad. These guys here, unfortunately, beat Frankfurt uh, despite having one of the worst first in 15 minutes that you might ever see. I mean, I think they barely won any uh, challenges, but then I cruise a pen penalty because Hinteregger I love his type of player. He's, of course, Austrian, but Sometimes the stupid challenges that he makes, it's just a, li a, a liability. On the edge of the box, pushes a play over. Penalty, Kruse, who came back to Wolfsburg from Hertha Her to Berlin, scores the goal, go the, the goal ahead, head goal in Frankfurt, really has a hard time getting back and Luka Baker makes it 2-0. Also, Wolfsburg a little bit relieving themselves, themselves from trouble. Freiburg minds a draw, preferred the other. That would be the, 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 the talk of, of, of the town that they beat Hertha. They actually might implicate Hertha now again in a relegation battle, where Hertha is the team that actually wants to push for European spaces because Berlin needs to be in the Champions League. No, not this chaos club, unfortunately. As much as I love this jersey back, back, back there. And, you know, it was not a, 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 a lucky win either when they had a 2-0 uh, lead and then only laid on Gechter pulls from back for Hertha. So, yeah, Hertha playing by, by the way, in red churches like Union Berlin, but, you know, because it's the city because of Berlin are red. Leverkusen, easily the most ent ent entertaining game, 4-2 uh, over Stutt Stuttgart. Um, I think Stuttgart did not play all that badly, but it, they seem to be a team that just cannot get anything going at the moment. A little bit in trouble of going down, I have to say. They got the equalizer, but then uh, oddly, very, very quickly put uh, Le Leverkusen ahead again. Uh, and at the moment when in the 86th Wirtz made it 3-1, you thought, yeah, that sells the game. And then we had a crazy last few minutes because Thomas in the 88th makes it exciting again and Stuttgart pushes all forward and then Wirtz assists Schick to make it, make it four for two. So within um, like three minutes, three, four minutes, we had three three goals to increase the score and many goals actually scored. Dortmund surprisingly showing a very good performance but I have to say that Union Berlin ever since this uh, little international break and the uh, close of the transfer window when they lost Kruse and so on uh, seem to be a little bit in trouble at the moment um, but yeah Reus scoring two uh, and then Guerrero another one at least something for them and then Hoffenheim uses all the weaknesses above them to I think go now again into uh, to, uh, at least top five spot, fifth uh, right in the uh, race for a uh, top four spot with a win over Bielefeld. Uh, if we look, I, I just want to comment on our things. It's pretty clear Bayern, Dortmund, Le Leverkusen, the top three is very much like in England. And then it's a crapshoot. Leipzig suddenly fourth place. The winner between Le Leipzig and Köln would have been in the Champions League spots for sure. And it's it's a really, really tight race. Leipzig, the favorites for sure, but uh, Hoffenheim is in there, Freiburg is in there, Union is in there. I was yeah, arguing Köln, Mainz and Frankfurt have a decent shot at making top four because it's not that far off. There's only three points off. But from is all going in all weird directions. Uh, as for the next round, I think Mainz-Leverkusen is a very interesting Friday game. Um, when I look at the other ones, uh, Köln, Frankfurt, basically who stays in the Champions League race? 
<laughs> and Dortmund Gladbach, of course, with Rose against his former team. I think that's the one to look out for. In any case, yeah, a lot of interesting things happening in the Bundesliga. Let me know what you thought in both Bundesliga. Let, 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 let me know what, what you thought about the games. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!